Hey, today I'm going to show you how to implement local push notification. It's useful if you want to get your users back into your app to increase your retention and usage and all of that. And so for a workout app, you might want to say, hey, time to work out, don't be a lazy little butt. Or for another app um, to like check in on something or hey, figure out, see the new, newest quote of the day for motivation or whatnot. So let's dive right into it. It's surprisingly simple. So you create a new iOS app. I'm gonna call it uh, your push storyboard or Swift UI doesn't matter. And we are given a view controller by default that we're going to use. Let's just implement two functions. We need to do two things. For one, check for permission. Okay, are we allowed to send push notifications, right? Remember all these alerts that the apps are asking you whether or not they are allowed to send you notifications? And then a uh, dispatch or a send notification, right? Dispatch notification like this. So how do we check for permission? Now create a notification center variable and have a, oh, we need to import user notification, all right? And then you can say user notification notification center dot current on here get notification settings here we go get the settings and then once we have the settings we can switch on the settings authorization status and this is going to tell us what the current state of your app is regarding the permission of sending notifications so let's uh, have a case uh, authorized Okay, if it's if I'm allowed to send a push notification, then dispatch my notification. Uh, and then ca case denied, oh, if it's denied, well, I guess return and do nothing or handle it differently, however you want to handle a den denied case. And then also you can say not determined. That's when uh, you have the use, like you check for permission. You're not asking for permission, right? You're checking what the user already have has given you for permission. and either they authorized it or they denied it or they weren't asked yet to give them their permission, right? So if it's not determined, what you want to do then is uh, access notification center dot and then request authorization with options like tap alt, is it alt? Yeah, alt, get the options and then say you want the permission to send alert and sound notification. In the completion handler, you're getting two variables passed in. One is a Boolean that will tell you whether or not the user allowed or permitted notification. So did allow, I'll call it like this and have an, an error. Did allow is true if he permitted it and is false if he denied it. So if he allowed it, great, dispatch notification. And uh, if not, do nothing. So must be exhaustive, yes, because there's even more cases that you can handle if you want to. I'll just say by default, return. Like for any other case, just return. You can check out what other cases there are, by just you know clicking in here if you want to, but those are the most common ones. Okay, so we figured, we handled that, right? So check for permission, unviewed it load, great. Now, how do we dispatch a notification? So what you would need to, have for the banner, right, alert, is a title and optionally a body if you want to, it's optional. So let's just define a title and let's say time to work out and then let's say a body, don't be a lazy little butt. And then you want to say at what time in the day. So the hour is going to be int and military. So 16 is for 4 p.m., 17 for 5 p.m. and so on. And then the minute. And I'm gonna go for 39. And then you can also determine whether it should be a daily notification, right? Should it be a daily reminder? So is daily equals, let's just say true here. Next, what you want to do is again, get the notification center center from the UN notification center dot current. You want to have content like the content content of the new notification, UN mutable notification content. And this is where you set all your stuff. Content title. Yep. Assign the title. Content body. Assign the body. Content sound. Let's go for default. The you know the classic doo-doo-doo notification sound 
Now, for the hour, minute, and is daily, it's a little bit of a different config configuration. What you need to do is you need a calendar. Calendar, you can get the current one, and then you want date components. Date components. Date components. Pass in the calendar. The calendar and the time zone. Also just time zone current. And here you're setting the hour and the date components minutes. Minute. Okay, great. Because that's going to be used for the trigger. So here we have a trigger. UN calendar notification trigger. Okay. Date matching a date component and whether or not it repeats daily. So we have the date components. Great. It's going to be 4 p.m. 39 and repeats daily, whatever is daily is having true or false. You know, you can also pass it in as a parameter, right? And then be more configurable. Next, you will need the notification request. UN notification request identify. Oh, I forgot about that variable. So you need a, a need an identifier as well. So what are you what if you send like two notifications per day, one in the morning, one in the evening, and there are two different ones. So they have to be having identifier so you can distinguish them. So let's say identifier is my uh, morning uh, notification. The identifier goes in here, the content goes in here and the trigger in here. Finally, you can just add this to the queue of notifications. But before you do that, you might want to remove all the previous notification with the same identifier. Uh, so let's say notification center dot remove remove pending notification request with identifier and then this one identifier why do you want to do that well what if you have this function be configurable with like hour and minute and you're changing it based on whatever you want to say the morning notification you're changing it to like 805 or 810 uh, maybe based on user input right then you want to say hey dispatch a new notification <clears throat> say today is 3 p.m. and the user inputs, oh, I want a daily remember, reminder every time at 9 a.m., right? So you're calling this function, setting 9 a.m., uh, but it's 3 p.m. for him, right? So you're adding to the queue here, notification, center, add the request to the queue, um, but you don't want the old notification to still pop up. What if he previously had um, said, oh, 7 a.m., right? So then he will, he will get 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. for the same identifier. You don't want that. So that's why you remove all the uh, pending notifications uh, with the same identifier, and then you add your new request. And that's it. Let's run the app for 4 p.m. 43. And it will ask you for permission. We are going to allow it. And then I can see command, I can hit command L to get to the home screen to see the notification. Let's wait for 4 p.m. 43. And there we go. Don't be lazy, a lazy little butt. And that's how you implement local push notification. Obviously, you can make a lot of optimization uh, that you maybe want to, you know, store and user defaults, the answer. And based on that, not always check for uh, permission or whatnot. But um, there we go. There you have it. If that was helpful, leave a like. It helps out a ton. If you have any questions regarding push notifications, let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them all or create a new video based on your question. And until then, see you next time. Bye.